Welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about vest lights. It's a common question how to make lights on your vest one wheel. I will try to answer a few things about it and hopefully it will help you with your DIY one wheel project. First of all, you have to figure out where you will get power for your lights. This depends on the controller. For example, on the Chip Fokker 2, there is a quite stable 5 volt line if you're gonna use about an amp or a little bit more for the lights it's gonna be okay. That's what I did for example on my first design I used just 5 mm LED diodes uh, to the resistors directly to the 5 volt of the chip focal. It runs great. I also like uh, how these red dots look like uh, but let's face it it's not that powerful. While some other controllers like the little focal which is uh, quite common now with the XR conversions uh, it doesn't provide a stable 5 volt power output that you can use for lights so you have to go with a different approach I use a DC DC converter and a solid state switch for lights I will describe how I made it some controllers even have the option of 12 volt line for lights so it really depends on your hardware you gotta figure out what's your source of power that you can use for lights. Either it's a 12 or 5 volt line that's powerful enough for your lights or it's just a 5 volt line that you're gonna use to switch on the lights and you're gonna use a DC to converter. With that option you will actually have a lot more power available and you will be able to make your lights very bright. You will also get to see the comparison of them with the GT which has quite powerful lights so stick with me and find out how to make your DIY lights for your one wheel. So as said, option number one is 5mm LED diodes in suitable holders that you put on your one wheel, like this. It's nice, it works, but it's not that bright. Option number two, PCB lights like this. I made my PCB lights so that they have two rows of LEDs. You can see it's marked with a dot so every second LED is on a different channel and on this side you have a connector that actually powers two separate lines. Uh, it also has fuses and resistors so with that double input power connector you get the option to either use the same white LEDs on all of the channels and then you can choose if you will power on just half of them for half power or maybe full all of them for maximum power that's option number one if you don't want to have both colors on both uh, front and rear and so same for the rear light, you can put either half of the red LEDs or all of the red LEDs. It totally depends how bright you want it to be. While option number two is to solder each second LED to be red and white. And this way, if you use half LEDs in white and half LEDs in red, you will be able to have both white as well as the red LEDs. Of course you can also power both uh, red and white at the same time, but why would you want that? It means that my uh, PCB lights support the direction of riding switching with different uh, lights. There are a few hardwares available that will switch the front and rear light for you. I did not uh, make my own or install any other in my board and I don't even plan to so don't ask me about it, there are solutions for this available for you. All you have to know is if you get the PCB lights from me, it will be compatible with those solutions because it uses actually two separate light bars in one PCB. But if you want to stay simple as I want, you can just put all of the LEDs of the same color in front and all of the same in the back and then you will actually have an option 
to switch half off or on if you want them to be more powerful or less powerful. So if you want these PCBs, let me know, I have a few extra. If not, you can use uh, LED strips available and other stuff. Uh, with PCB lights like this, you can go very bright. Your limit is only the cooling. Uh, these front LEDs, for example, I will uh, get you the parts which they are, are pretty powerful. I could crank them even brighter, but then they are getting quite hot. And you can set the brightness with the resistors on the back. I will write down the values of the resistors I used, because I found out it's a good value between high brightness and not being too warm, too hot, not needing a heatsink. So it works pretty fine for me, while if you want them brighter, feel free to check their datasheet and go as high as you want, but you will most probably need to cool them down somehow if you use this option. But anyway, at this point, you should see the comparison of my headlights and rear lights towards the GT on the brightest setting possible. With the value of the resistors I use right now, I still have headroom, I could make it brighter, but you can see that it's almost the same as the GT, maybe a tiny bit less in front and maybe a tiny bit more in the back, but it works very well and I'm happy with it, uh, it's powerful enough. And now let's continue with the solution, how to turn these lights on and off. If you don't have enough power available on your 5 volt line directly on your controller. First of all, you need a DC DC converter. I took one of the cheapest ones that goes until 120 volts DC input power and makes 5 volt DC output power. I tested it in a separate video, feel free to check it out. But all I can say in this video is that it works great. I had zero problems with it till now. I suggest you don't use it on more than 2 amps and it will not get hot. So that's kind of optimal. It's up to 2 amps if you ask me. But anyway, you can go it even a little bit higher. We need to somehow switch this DC DC converter on and off. You cannot do this directly with a relay powered from your 5 volt from your controller, because at high voltage, like 84 volts, the relay will stick and it won't work or it will stop working very soon. So we need to use some kind of a solid state switch that uses a transistor to power on the lights this way you will not have a problem of the relay sticking. This is my first version of this switch. It didn't work exactly as planned, so don't bother with that one. I made a second one, it's here. Uh, on my board, I use it just as a proto board. It works well, but it's not as nice as it could be. So with the help of a friend, we are designing a PCB for that. It's gonna be available shortly. If you want it, let me know. I will not go in a lot of details about the schematics, but basically you have the 5 volt uh, input connector from the controller. You have another connector that you can wire a switch onto. So that's where you can put a manual switch if you want to switch the lights on and off. Then there is a relay. It's there just so that the high voltage cannot go uh, directly to your controller and make it explode in case some other component here fails or something. So basically the relay is there just for safety. Then there's a bunch of other stuff that I'm not gonna go into details uh, about them. What you need to know is the resistor one needs to be set accordingly to your uh, battery pack voltage. So if you are running uh, 20S, it should be about 82 kilo ohms. For example, for 15 or 16S, uh, 50k would work and for 18 something in between. That's mostly it if you want to copy it for your own personal use. So feel free to use this design to make your own, maybe on a proto board, or if you want ask me for a PCB, maybe an empty PCB or even a completely soldered one. I will have a few extra but it's mostly on request, depends on the demand. So these are the most common two options for running lights. Both options work well for me, but of course uh, you should choose the one that's right for your controller. You saw the video of comparing them to the GT lights that are crazy bright 
and minus as well so that's kind of it i hope you learned something new if you want the pcb for the lights from me feel free to let me know see you next time